In this episode, OpenAI, Elon Musk, and Saudi Arabia, plus Google trying to make robots smarter with its very own Gemini, and Agility Robotics telling us how much it charges to run humanoids in a warehouse. This and more coming to you right now. Let's get it. Check this out, gang. Xiaomi's humanless factory is already up and running in Beijing. The new smart factory is 100% automated, and the system that runs it is capable of finding and fixing any problems that could potentially take place. Now, apparently, it can also optimize internal processes on the go to grow on its own. Xiaomi's on another level, folks. The nearly 1 million square foot or 80 square kilometers factory is equipped with 11 automated production lines. Supposedly, Xiaomi's latest foldable models, the Mix Fold 4 and Mix Flip, will be produced here at a rate of, get ready, drum roll, one phone in three seconds, 24 seven. But what about the cleaning? How many people would it take? And how many robot vacuum cleaner hours you'd need to cover that much space? According to the developers of this miracle, the robot factory maintains an absolutely pristine and clean production environment with dust removal at the level of a micron. Looks like they thought this through. Obviously, our regular viewers would point out that this is not the first fully robotic factory, but it is the first time that in a fully robotic production, the optimization of all processes is given not to humans, but to artificial intelligence. And yet, humans are still needed. Xiaomi's management admitted that to create a robot factory, the company had to completely rework and finalize the production and technological software. And it was developed by people. By the way, even in Alibaba, which today is trying to dominate the market of AI applications in China, its own neural network programmer serves only as an assistant to real people, not their replacement. And SpaceX announced a new service for Starlink commercial customers that will provide high-speed internet with download speeds of up to 8 gigabits per second, even in places like Alaska or somewhere out there in the ocean. Starlink's new system uses mobile gateway technology, which allows public base stations to be placed not only on land, but also on sea vessels and airplanes. It would cost SpaceX customers one and a quarter million dollars to install such a gateway on land, plus a monthly fee of $75,000 or more, depending on the traffic used. Moving on, Elon Musk postponed the robot taxi presentation previously scheduled for August 8th. The reason is, he asked for important changes to front end design. Musk also added that moving the date to October would allow Tesla to, quote, show a little more. All in all, Elon, as usual, overreached on his deadline. Can we forgive? His competitors won't, and there are many. They are out for blood. The startup Synchron, which is already implanting along with Neuralink chips for brain-computer interface in first volunteers, announced the introduction of ChatGPT into its technology. The artificial intelligence system will generate automatic prompts for users' text messages. At the same time, it will take into account the context and emotions of the person. Kind of like T9, but on steroids. Given that today's neural interfaces are far from being as fast as human thought, adding generative AI could serve the technology well and make using the interface faster and more enjoyable. Can Elon wing this? He got the likes of GPT on his back, let alone startups trying to take away what's rightfully his. But Musk's own chatbot, Grok, isn't ready for such a joyride as of yet. It's exciting to see the ball in Musk's court though. Your move, Elon. Talk about OpenAI, first the company introduced a new free model GPT-40 Mini, which will replace GPT-3.5 Turbo. The novelty is intended to make the company's technologies more accessible and less power-consuming. 
As an example, a million input tokens for GPT-40 Mini costs 15 cents and a million output tokens cost 60. This is reportedly 60% cheaper than the price of GPT-3.5 Turbo. For now, the AI supports text and images, but in the future, it will be able to process voice as well. At the same time, GPT-40 Mini has a context window of 128,000 tokens and its knowledge is limited to October 2023. Developers assure us that as a chatbot, the novelty is superior to GPT-4. One other distinction of GPT-40 Mini is the use of a new safety tactic referred to as, quote, instruction hierarchy. The idea is that some instructions are inherently more important to GPT than others. The system is designed to reduce and detangle unwanted use of generative artificial intelligence with this tactic. We'll keep you updated as to how quickly a modern-day Wozniak cracks this. Also, remember that secretive OpenAI project, a certain strawberry? Quite possibly previously known as QSTAR, this new AI model will apparently be immune to GPT mistakes, namely errors and hallucinations. Strawberry will be able to investigate the question posed to it and reason like a human to give an accurate and qualified answer. Anonymous sources from OpenAI said that they've already seen a demo of Strawberry at work and are very impressed with it. Do you think the company has really achieved a breakthrough in AI or is this just a PR stunt? Not only that, but OpenAI also has created a system for evaluating AI progress so that people can realize how close we've actually come to general artificial intelligence. And the company placed its current achievements at one out of five possible steps, but at the same time noted that it's close to reaching level two, which has been dubbed Reasoners. Sounds scary or modern? Please do share your thoughts in the comments below. Now on to news from the world of robots, Agility Robotics has lifted the veil of secrecy about the cost of running their equipment. Remember how digit robots have already been deployed in companies' warehouses like Spanx? And we ain't talking no more pilot projects, son. We talking paper, real hard cash, commercial enterprise. Agility Robotics has put digit on the grid. Customers do not buy robots though, they pay for their work. We found out that the cost of the robot services for carrying empty boxes and full boxes for that matter, it's almost double the average warehousing wage, i.e. $30 per hour. This price also includes all maintenance and all accessories for Digit. Experts have calculated that the return on investment for the company's customers at this cost will be two years. Having said that, an improved Digit will be released very soon. It will be able to lift 15 pounds or 6 kilos more than the previous version, work over 8 hours on a single charge, and perhaps be cheaper, since Agility aims to reduce the cost of components and increase the scale of production. Moving on, Google is combining its developments in robotics and AI. The company claims to be successfully making robots smarter with Gemini AI. Specifically, DeepMind uses video tours in Gemini 1.5 Pro to train robots to navigate and perform tasks. Basically, the robot watches a video tour of a room, for example, then receives a request from a user such as, where can I charge my phone? Gemini then helps the robot understand exactly what the user wants and what it needs to offer. After processing the information, which takes on average 10 to 30 seconds, the robot can guide the person to the outlet it saw earlier in the room. Developers say that in the 50 experiments conducted, the robot had a 90% success rate, which sounds promising. And this robot is already making a real difference in the real world. Meet Vero, a robot dog vacuum cleaner that's already cleaning cigarette butts off the beaches of Genoa. To do this, engineers from Dynamic Legged Systems at the Italian Institute of Technology took Unitree's Alien Go robot, mounted an industrial vacuum cleaner on its back, and ran hoses down each of the robot's legs. Special nozzles printed on a 3D printer ensure maximum suction close to the ground. But the robot doesn't just wander aimlessly along the beach sucking up sand. 
Developers have created algorithms for it, thanks to which it recognizes small debris on the ground and plans how to interact with it. Simply put, where to step and what to clean. Pretty neat, huh? Quick announcement, FBR's Hadrian X robot is looking for work in the United States, where it traveled all the way from Australia. The machine was developed down under and is aimed at construction companies dealing with entire townships or communities. The Hadrian X, equipped with a 100-foot or 32-meter telescopic boom, can assemble a house in two days, laying on average 500 stone blocks per hour. And here's another humanoid robot. Meet Mintybot which can navigate complex environments by combining a 3D model of the world with a dynamic map of obstacles. Like a little kid who's afraid of the dark, the robot needs a human guide for the first go. The machine follows him, keeping him in sight at all times. And after the excursion, the robot can already walk there by itself. It's an interesting development, but it's hard to surprise people with such things today, especially if you have kids and know how annoying it is to get up at 3 a.m. for a bathroom break from sleep. But engineers from the Laboratory of Intelligent Systems of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology did manage to surprise a lot of people. They've developed a drone which for landing crashes into poles or trees to embrace them with its wings. The Perk Hug has an upwardly bent nose and a rigid tail made of polypropylene foam. It only weighs a pound or 550 grams and its wingspan is about 40 inches or 95 centimeters. When it hits an obstacle, the drone slides on it with its nose until it takes a vertical position. After that, a system of latches passively releases the tension cable that keeps the segmented wings open during flight. Torsion springs then make the wings play gravity around the pole and lock the UAV in place. The drone is intended for inspections in forests, which, you know, poor squirrels and other forest dwellers. What do you guys think of this one? On to sands and deserts. Saudi Arabia has placed the largest order for flying cabs to the German company Lilium, purchasing 100 devices at once. The money from this contract will help the company complete the development and certification of the cars as well as put it into production. The electric planes of vertical takeoff and landing will be used for development of tourism in the country in which the state is now investing significant funds. For the same reason, Saudi Arabia has also ordered thousands of one- and two-seater drones from Fly Now. They'll transport visitors to the 2030 World Expo in Riyadh. For this order, the Austrian startup is even opening up a separate production facility in the country. Compact capsules themselves promise a battery-powered range of up to 30 miles or 50 kilometers and a maximum speed of 80 miles or 130 kilometers per hour. Their design and layout allows them to fly like a helicopter, which means that the device falls under current flight regulations. What piece of news caught your eye? Let us know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Instagram for more news from the world of high tech.